Hi, my name is Jack Heineman. I did not make a music video or uh, any cool real animations, and I also don't have a cool accent. But I do uh, for, have the fortune um, that I have two of my works uh, shortlisted this year in the business analytics category. Um, little background on me, I came to Gaylor Electric eight years ago. I was in the IT department at the time. Um, my boss went to breakfast with our president and CEO, and he had said, I want someone to build a bell curve. And my boss goes, oh, well, Jack can build you a bell curve. And then he came back to the office and he said, hey, I just promised Chuck you can build him this bell curve, so you better figure it out. <laughs> and that was about seven and a half years ago where I kind of made this transition um, into analytics. Um, I built the first bell curve in Excel but someone else at the company had convinced them to buy Tableau, uh, and I was actually competing against some Tableau consultants. My bell curve was better, but we had bought Tableau, so then I started figuring out how to use Tableau, uh, and it's been awesome for my career. Um, so like I said, Gaylor Electric, um, we are an electrical subcontractor. Um, next year's our 40th anniversary. We have offices in six states. Um, in the Midwest and Southeast, but we will go anywhere uh, to build projects. We go all over the country, and we will build just about anything other than a single family home. So that's any building you see, we've probably built one of them, and some of them probably didn't go well. So uh, the first Dashboard we're going to look at here is this uh, employee retention dashboard. This is a modified version of something I, I built for our company. Uh, I found some fake data that I could use uh, to build this out. Um, but it starts with this definition. Well, I mean, here's the background. It's a full kind of exploratory dashboard for the user. They can navigate uh, data prep and SQL, use Tableau, one dashboard, one sheet. 35 map layers. Um, if you don't use Tableau, that's a lot of map layers for one sheet. Um, but it's got this uh, tutorial, and the users can kind of interact with it. So as we get into retention, I was asked to do this, and then it was like, OK, well, what does that even mean? So our definition is, of those employees you have at the start of the year, how many of those did we retain through the end of the year? So in this example, we start in 2018, January 2018, with 182 employees. In February, we have 179 of those 182 still remaining. Um, by July, it's 161 out of the 182. And by December, we've got 141 out of 182, so that's a 77% retention rate. Okay, and then you can do the same thing for the next month. So February 2018, we had 180 and we were able to retain 137 of those uh, 180 for 76%. So this is the basics behind it, and so what I've kind of called these lightning bolts, each of them represent you know, a starting period and then the 12-month retention from each of those points, um, and then they kind of come together to form what I've called this mountain range that is the rolling 12-month retention in our company. So that all works great if I've got two minutes to explain it to everyone on what uh, we mean by retention rate. Um, and that's why I built these tutorials. So you can see there on the left, you've got kind of two different um, tutorials. One is kind of how do, how do I read this chart? And so it goes through kind of what I just um, walked you guys through as what's the math, what's our calculation for retention. And so it walks them through that. And then this other tutorial uh, here above will go ahead and explain the different features of the chart, how you can interact, um, you know, how you can see a tooltip change the period, and then also change um, to the different segments within the company to see different um, retention rates. Okay, and so this starts to unveil these stories within. Um, this data set, you know, you, you look at this and what's going on during this period, okay? And so you can see 
this is now showing a one month rolling retention. You can see the April to May 2020, we lost about 10% of our folks with layoffs in, in, the, um, in this data set, okay? So you can see from June 2019 through May of 2020, our retention rate dropped there to 73%. Um, and then fast forward, if you look at the other side of it, we, our best retention ever comes on the other side of COVID of the folks that stayed. Um, you know, Superstore's retention uh, reached an all-time high at 89%. Okay, and so then you can look at this for Superstore as a whole and you can start diving into different segments. And so in the consumer segment here, one of the things you really wanna see is those lines go flat. That means you didn't lose anyone for those months um, out of your retention. So you really want your lines to kind of pull to the right. That's gonna reflect a, a better retention. Um, and then you can see kind of the inverse of that here with this corporate segment and how it really got hit. Um, during COVID that kind of took the biggest impact, but that it's rebounding well um, currently. And then we've got another uh, segment of the company, uh, the home office segment that's really struggling uh, currently and overall has been kind of the most volatile um, area within the company. So that's the first um, dashboard uh, that I built. Um, and then it comes to Okay, well, how do you solve this problem? Uh, you know, if you're looking at this 12 month retention and you get to the end and it's like, oh, we're down to 62%, well, how do we fix that? The key is to fix this one month retention. Um, so those are kind of in between 92, 93, 94. If you turn those into 95s, 96, 97s, that's where you're gonna be able to fix the 12 month retention over time. So really being able to see what the month over month rate is how you you kind of get the result at the end. Um, and so that's uh, the retention dashboard. And then this other uh, dashboard I built, uh, this HR cross-functional mobility, um, kind of the exact opposite. I did a long form uh, infographic, uh, SQL and Tableau again, uh, eight sheets with six to 10 layers uh, per sheet. And this was a real world fake data challenge so uh, it's a tableau community challenge run by mark bradborn jackie moore and then uh, they teamed up with steve wexler who's in the room today for this challenge uh, this summer but they wanted to kind of explore how folks move through an organization and you can see the assignment here the different questions they wanted to see answered to uh, you know what's the best way to visualize this data um, to show that flow of employees through the organization. So my mind immediately went to, um, you know, Sankey diagram, which this, uh, I hadn't built one be before, but I decided um, this was the time I was gonna try it. I also knew I wanted something like this and not this. Um, I really, don't get much out of this, uh, this Sankey on the right, but I think you can draw some insights uh, from the Sankey on the left. So I kind of had these three priorities as I was building it. I wanted to show, obviously, the flow of employees from team to team. Uh, I wanted to place an emphasis on that movement and didn't necessarily care as much about the head count. And then um, I wanted to try as best I can to not cross the streams, as I'd learned uh, a long time ago. Like you can see here, the slide used to have a 40-year-old movie reference. But I also had to sign this document that said, we'll use only material that I own. And I couldn't get a hold of anyone over at uh, Columbia Pictures but I am a wizard in Microsoft Paint, so <laughs> this is what you get. If you can imagine not crossing the streams, that's what we're going for. So again, I want to show the movement over the head count, so I kind of built these sections in my Sankey where the bars don't touch, and that was intentional I didn't care about 
you know, did we have 88 employees this month versus 92 the next month? I more wanted to make sure you could see at a department or a team level that they own that space. And so um, you can see here, Department C is the only department that will go into that space. Team five is the only team that will kind of occupy this space. Um, and so that's how I kind of did that movement over the, over the head count. And then, like I said before, first thing you had ever built. So Ken Flairledge um, provides templates and ways to do this. So um, you can kind of just inject your data in there um, to make it easy. And then, like I said, it, it turned into this very useless slide of uh, the eight things, but I'll kind of pop through individual. You start to see these stories come out of the data. So you see the new hires and how they kind of flowed into the different teams in the organization. Um, so they hired 20 new employees. Um, however, uh, eight out of those 20 wound up leaving the company within the six month range. And so you can, you can see how uh, different employees kind of made it from a new hire stage up there when they're white, that's the new hire, spill into the team, and then they come down here as a, as a termination down at the bottom. Um, so you can see the company didn't do a great job retaining those new hires. Um, another thing, 10 total employees left the company, and most of them were kind of low tenure, no one over three years. Um, wound up leaving the company, um, and about 9.5% of the company left. Um, then you start getting into the different teams. The question is about, do, is a team unhealthy or not? So this team had 12 employees go through it, and by the end, uh, over here on the far right, they're left with one employee. And five of those 12 wound up leaving the company, so you probably have some issues with either management or something going on in that team um, that's volatile. Uh, for those employees. Um, but in that same department, you've got another team that was very, uh, very stable. And so they uh, kept 90% of their team um, and had the highest tenure in the company as well. Department C, also uh, very stable. 51 employees passed through there. Only one of them wound up uh, leaving the company. Um, so. Obviously, they build that employee relationship and, and keep it throughout. Um, Department A, um, most of the employees that passed through there, um, they kept, uh, which was the highest of any department. And then you can see the team uh, teams here in Department B that kind of have this one-to-one -one where they're passing employees back and forth um, as many leave the, the team as come into it. So that's kind of a walk through both my uh, short list of works. Reach out to me if you have any questions and, uh, uh, or at lunchtime, and thank you.